The longsword is one of the most popular weapons in Monster Hunter World, and for good reason. It's well balanced, it has fantastic reach, great damage output, feel good finishers and counters, and it's not that hard to pick up and play. Yet it has a thick layer of nuance so the time and effort that you put into mastering it is well rewarded. Get ready to slash, counter, and weave in and out like a true samurai. Welcome to my tutorial on the longsword. The concept of the longsword is simple enough. As you attack, the gauge on the upper left hand side of the screen will fill with energy, and you can use that energy to do a special spirit combo, and if you nail the final hit on that spirit combo, it will level up your spirit gauge, which will raise your base attack. But before we get into the spirit gauge, let's start out by understanding our basic moves. Okay, our draw attack, or if we have forward input and we press the triangle button, is this thing called the step slash. It's called step slash because you actually do a forward step, when you do the move. It really allows you to close distance. Look at the height of that attack though. It is super tall. This is why the longsword is called the tail slashing expert because even if you've got a Rathalos tail way up in the air, you can go whammo and you'll still nail it way up there. If you press triangle one more time, you'll do this overhead slash. If you notice the overhead slash, you do not move forward like this. You'll just stay in place. This attack is slightly less powerful, but still it's good to just do a one and a two. There you go. If we press the triangle button one more time, we'll do a third hit. There's one, two, and three. And that is just a thrust. It's just a very quick attack that sort of is just a combo thing here. A. Hey. <laughs> and if we press triangle one more time, we'll do one more transitional cut, which is an upward one. There we go, the rising slash. The great thing is that outside that step slash, you can loop those triangle attacks over and over. So just press the triangle button and you can do this as an endless combo to sort of increase your gauge and just generally output a lot of damage. But the real depth of this weapon comes from what is called the fade slash. At any time you can press triangle and circle button and you'll do this jump backwards, which is also an attack. This isn't an invade, so you don't have iframes during it, but you do have the ability to evade and attack and do damage at the same time. If you're in the middle of a combo, you can add right input when you press triangle and circle to do a right fade slash, or if you want, you can do a left fade slash. One thing I will add is that this thing has a very wide hitting radius, um, so if you have your teammate on your right hand side and you fade slash to the right, there's a good chance you're gonna trip them, um, which is really going to annoy them because it's going to interrupt their attack. So remember, you have three different directions you can do fade slashes, so keep in mind where your teammates are so you aren't knocking them around as well. And to round this off, there is a special move you can do by pressing the R2 button after a fade slash, which is this nice run and attack here, this jumping slash. From there, you can continue on comboing. Let's see what that looks like. This just allows you to really get back in there and keep the onslaught going. The longsword is really all about repositioning, so you might want to hit, wait a second, nope, go to the right, go back, wait, hit, nope, over here and stuff like that. You really want to be using positioning like a real samurai where you wait for your right position, you see the attack coming, you get into place, and you just keep on attacking. And finally, one last move is if we press the circle button, we can do that simple thrust again. This is a really great way to just quick get a hit off, hit a specific spot, get into a combo, and we'll talk a little bit later why being able to get into a combo really fast is a great thing. Okay, now it's time to talk about the spirit gauge because that is the real meat of the weapon. The spirit combo is the most easiest combo to do in the game. All you have to do is press the R2 button to do an attack. You do this four times and it will do the entire combo. Keep in mind though that each hit of the spirit combo does take a certain amount of gauge. So generally you wanna be near full gauge on the upper left in order to pull off the entire combo. Cause if you run out midway, you're gonna stop. So let's see what spirit attack one looks like. We'll hit the R2 button here. It's just a nice powerful attack. All of the Spirit Blade attack combos have super armor and mind's eye, meaning that you're not gonna get hit out of it and you're not going to bounce off even if you're doing it up against a really tough part of the monster. Let's press it twice so we can see the second hit of the combo. There's one and two. It's just a nice downward Spirit uh, Blade two. Now if we notice if I try to do it now because I don't have much gauge, I could do one, two, and then it just stops. I did not have enough gauge in order to do spirit attack three. So let's go ahead and build up some gauge here. 
There we go. And now let's check out three, which is a triple hit. You got one, two, and three. You only have to press R button once. You don't have to jam on it to do that. Um, now let's see the finisher, which is the really, really cool part of this weapon. Okay, here we go. There's one, two, three, and finally, bam, the spirit round slash. If you notice, it's really cool looking, so you'll put away your weapon uh, when you complete that move. And if you notice, our gauge just went from no color to white. White will increase all of your base attack by 5%, meaning I'll be doing 5% more damage with everything I do just because I have white gauge. The white gauge actually lasts for three and a half minutes. So after three and a half minutes, if I haven't been able to do another spirit round slash to get to the next level, um, I will go back down to no level. However, three and a half minutes of not attacking, <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be the case. Okay, now let's go up to the next level. And when I do this, I'm gonna show you that you can actually whiff on every attack, but as long as you hit that final one, you'll still go up a level. And now we are in yellow or orange, or however you wanna see that. This will raise your base attack by 10%, and it lasts for two minutes and 25 seconds. And the last and final level is red, which is a whopping 20% attack up boost and lasts for one minute and 10 seconds. Okay, I went ahead and reset my spirit gauge so I can show you some shortcuts here. You may be asking yourself, well, I'm doing four attacks. Um, what if I don't have enough gauge to get to the final hit? Well, the good news is that let's say we don't have quite enough energy. Let's do this. Um, we can actually have two opportunities to sneak in a regular attack during the spirit combo, which is by pressing the triangle button after the first and second slash. Here's one hit, two hit, and now we can do this and squeeze just enough juice to do our final attack. Also, you may be asking yourself, well, four attacks to get to that sort of finisher round slash is quite a lot. Is there any shortcuts? And yes, there's a lot. The first one I wanna show you is if you remember when you do the uh, fade slash and you press R2 afterwards, you do this spirit jumping slash. Well, if you have energy built up in your gauge, this will actually act as a substitute for a spirit attack. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. You notice that is a substitute for both spirit attack one and two. So make sure you have enough gauge build up to pull this off. Here we go. And then hit it. And then boom. So yeah, using that uh, run in attack after a fade slash is awesome for getting up to that round slash. One thing to note here is that the spirit combo is not all or nothing. So you could be using the spirit attacks just to deal out a lot of good damage. You don't actually have to be attacking and going straight to that final. You can use this just like this to go in and out and just use it so you're not bouncing off and you're doing good damage. And then when the time is right, wail and hit that round slash. Okay, before we move on to the most important additions to this weapon, which are real game changers, let's talk about jumping and sliding attacks because those also present great opportunities to have a shortcut to get to that round slash. So normally when you jump off a ledge, let's do that here and press the triangle button. We'll just do a normal jumping slash has pretty good mount damage, so I do find that it's pretty easy to mount a monster using this. If we press the R2 button, you notice we'll do jumping spirit blade. Um, I don't have any energy to, uh, built up, so let's go ahead and build up a little bit, and you can see here. So let's jump off now and use that with energy. And that is a substitute for spirit blade one. And the weapon does have a nice slide attack, hit the triangle button to do an upward hit and again to do a downward hit. There is a special move you can do with the R2 button, but I'll show that after we go to white. Okay, white is where stuff gets really interesting. Uh, the jumping attacks do take quite a bit of spirit energy, so let's go ahead and get a full gauge here so I can show off what it does. And if we press R2 when we're jumping, it will do this awesome attack here, one, two. One, two, three, boom. If you notice, that is a substitute for Spirit Blade 1 and 2, meaning it's much easier to get to your final hit and then the round slash if you do it from a jump. Um, sliding is probably the fastest way to get into a round slash. So hold R2, so or R1, so when you're sliding down, you're gonna be holding that, so you're sliding and press R2 at the same time. Do this amazing, cool looking move and wang right into a round slash. So that is literally one move and you're in it. Let's go ahead and charge up a little bit of energy here so I can show you how that works going into red as well. Such a cool looking attack. There we go, now we're in red. 
And if you notice, it does restore the red gauge. So even though red only lasts for a minute and 10 seconds, you can keep spamming that round slash to sort of restore it back up to full gauge. Okay, now that we've covered the regular attacks, the jumping attacks, the sliding attacks, the spirit combo, it's time to talk about the two most exciting additions to the weapon, which is the Foresight Slash and the Spirit Helmbreaker. First, let's start out with the counter attack. So at any time during an actual combo, you can press R2 and the circle button to do this thing called the Foresight Slash. It's a very nice jump backwards. You'll jump forward and then do another counter attack here. The cool thing is though, is that that window right here when you're jumping back, if you get hit during that window, meaning you had the foresight to see the hit coming, um, you'll actually be able to follow it up with a round slash by pressing R2. One move, boom, you got your final. Now if you notice the gauge, um, all the energy that I have on my spirit gauge here, we do sacrifice it when we do this attack. It's kind of the price to pay. <laughs> um, but we actually don't need any gauge uh, when we do this. Um, it just sort of takes it as sort of a price uh, for being able to do the attack. So it's kind of like a risk and reward thing, um, but it's, it really doesn't punish you all that much because even if you don't get hit by an attack, as you see here, you still rush in and you can continue comboing and stuff like that. So it's not really a big deal if you miss, but if you nail it, watch what happens. Okay, I can't actually show you this here in the training room, so I will go into a hunt to show it, but just so you guys can see the effect so you know when you succeeded and when you didn't, here's what it looks like. You get a nice little white dash. Um, you can do this to avoid uh, in almost anything. Even the Nergigante's dive, you can do this. So let me go ahead and show that off in the real hunt. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, they gave the longsword an absolutely killer special attack. At any time, press R2 and the triangle button and you'll do the spirit thrust. If you nail that spirit thrust, you'll be able to press the triangle button to leap high into the air and do the spirit helmbreaker. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, one thing I want you to take notice here is that I'm on white gauge right now. When you do this spirit helmbreaker, you will be giving up one level of your spirit gauge. So I will go down to nothing again. Let's go ahead and nail this thing here. <laughs> it's hard to show you here, so I will go into a hunt to show it, but the Spirit Helmbreaker does do up to seven hits. You can actually let it uh, initiate on its own, or you can change your direction here and initiate yourself. Now, if you notice, it's actually not that powerful at both white and yellow uh, gauge. And that's because this move is really meant uh, for red gauge. So let's see what, how much this thing transforms. In terms of motion value, it does seven hits of 10 motion. So it's actually really weak. Um, but once you do it in red, that 10 motion goes up to 25. So that is a huge difference, especially when you consider you get 20% additional attack for being in red. And all those bonuses apply to that move as well. Okay, now we're in red. Now, I don't even need to have gauge in order to do this. Let's check it out. And of course, I get that flashing gauge, which just means that for a limited period of time, the buildup of spirit gauge is going to be much higher um, than normal. Let's go ahead and see that one more time. I want you guys to take a look at, you know, after you do the spirit helmbreaker, how important it is that you take advantage of that uh, charge state for the spirit gauge. See this again. Yeah, I almost needed nothing. Just by sneaking in those two attacks in the middle of spirit combo, I was able to get to the round slash starting out with nothing. Yeah, so that is really cool. Okay, now for one advanced technique, which I think is absolutely essential to high level play with the longsword, which is input delay. Now, if you notice, if we just jam on the triangle button, we'll do our combos pretty fast, actually. Um, but because this is a samurai weapon, what you really want to be doing is looking for small openings and using that fade slash to really jump around um, and hit the monster. But if you're just doing this in rapid succession, you're going to find yourself getting hit. So imagine that this pull for a second is a Baroth, and we know that he might actually start to charge us. 
we can actually delay our input. Like here, wait. 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 This is really important when you time out stuff like the forward sight slash. Uh, so for example, we're in here, we're attacking, we're like, uh oh, an attack's coming. Wait for it, now. And we can hit it like that. So being able to try to experiment around with this and I think you'll find that the input uh, delay is actually a very, very good technique for getting good with this weapon. And one final note, uh, it does have a very nice cool mountain attack that actually builds up your spirit gauge, which is great because that means by the time you drop the monster, you basically have a full gauge so you can go ahead and get up to that full combo and level up. And that's that. With any video, I'm sure there's something that I forgot. If it's critical, go ahead and put that down in the comments down below so we can share that information with everybody. And really, give Longsword a shot. It's very easy to want to dislike the most popular weapon, but in this case, I think it's well deserved. Longsword is a fabulous weapon, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit like if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, happy hunting.